while Mount St. Helens laid waste everything for 20 miles in a matter of seconds. The Soufri Hills volcano on the island of Montserrat has been raining down death and destruction for years. During that time, island resident David Lee has chronicled the violent life of a volcano and the slow death of an island. I've been documenting the volcanic eruption here in Montserrat since its beginning in uh, July of 95. We're gonna take a trip up there and see what it's all about up in the vent. I have been going up there to capture images of this volcano up close. Uh, we're at about uh, 2,200 feet. Everything's just dead. David will never forget one of his first and nearly his last close encounter with the unpredictable volcano. Just as I got up to the peak, turned the camera on, I heard this strange noise. It's right in here, you start to hear it. And it makes your heart beat real fast. And it's hot already, and it's spewing right now. And as I got to the crater edge, there was a big eruption that came spewing up out of the crater. That's hot stuff going on. But it's the whole mountain shaking harder and harder. So I'm getting out of here. And I'm telling you, I know I set the record running down that mountain. I'm out of here. It was just shivering, 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 up and down under your feet. And you could feel this awesome power underneath vibrating, wanting to come out. Do I look scared? I'm not out of here yet. I'm only down about 600 feet. If the whole thing went, wouldn't have a chance up here. Despite his initial close call, David continued his work. I think it's really important that what happened here was documented both up at the mountain and to the people left here in Montserrat. We've had a major eruption here. On August 22nd, 1997, a sudden large eruption took David and much of the island by surprise. Oh my God! In a matter of minutes, tons of volcanic ash was blasted into the air and began smothering the southern part of Montserrat. The shield is hitting like it did the last time I came up here. You can see how heavy a cloud it is. It's actually, you can hear it the rock sitting on the roof. Lightning and thunder here. I mean, this black cloud fell upon me, and it rained gravel and mud, and it was hot, it was sweaty, all the windows were up, and it was this, at noon, you were in this pitch black darkness. Trapped with little hope of escape, David could do nothing more than follow the dim taillights of a car on the road just ahead of him. Can't even find the car ahead of me. Finally, after several agonizing moments, David managed to escape the darkness. He must have lost his windshield washers because he's leaning out the car door. We were able to drive out of that and then into the village of Salem, which was just covered in mud. Everything and everybody was in this mud rain. They'd been just on the edge of the blackout. This cataclysmic eruption and several others that soon followed led to the evacuation of several thousand islanders. Uh, estimates four to eight inches of ash down This there. is not like your Hawaiian volcanoes where the lava runs down the side of the mountain. This has many events that are terrible and catastrophic, and many, many people were forced to leave because they'd lost everything they had as that mountain would go out of control and just wipe out villages. Once home to more than 11,000 people, continual eruptions and massive pyroclastic flows have deposited more than 12 feet of ash on the southern half of the island, creating a virtual wasteland where paradise once stood. For more than four years, David's self-produced documentaries have provided a haunting chronicle of the slow and sad transformation of Montserrat. The bank of Montserrat is pretty much 
buried. We have no ability to control the force of a volcanic eruption. Our abilities are puny compared to that force of nature. It truly is a power that's out of control.